Alright, we're back. Going after Kicking Dog for Randall. Jumpy. So began yet another battle against the evil. Yeah, fun fact, uh, the Great Khan Armory <coughs> was able to buy like a thousand rounds of 12.7 millimeter. Associates, motherfuckers, I am invincible. <laughs> so I know in, in Fallout 4, I never liked I know a lot of people don't like that the, um, the protagonist has a voice. But I'm just thinking it would be kinda cool if um, there was like a button you could press to make like like call outs and stuff. So like how you hear uh, Ford over there like shouting stuff out. I just remember um, in Far Cry prepare. Blood Dragon, there was like a hotkey where you could like flip off uh, enemies. Justice, evil doers. I think there's another game that has that too. Uh, oh, you're kicking dog. Okay. Um, I think Duke Nukem has it. I think in that in that game you can actually. Oh, you know what it was? Um, what's that game? Uh, Postal. Yeah, in that game you can. Uh, <laughs> you're like in the middle of a firefight. You can just start pissing on your enemy, just to taunt them. Oh, and I'm probably thinking of Wasteland as well, because I know, like if you're playing as like the leadership thing. Whatever character you usually have set to your leader, um, I have a. Uh, I'll boost like their skill on that so that they can taunt the enemy and like demoralize them for a turn. Yeah, and so began yet another battle against no survivors. the survivors and their evilness. Have a note when we click. Uh, no, hold on. I know, I mean, the last guy had one, but I don't know if this guy would. Doesn't have like a desk or anything he would put a note on. Okay. Get all the tin cans. It's lesson number seven. 
Every uh, miscellaneous item you pick up, no matter how worthless it is, it uh, improves your game's frame rate. By the end of this playthrough, we'll be on 60 FPS again. <laughs> uh. oh, yep, so there's a can. Can't miss any of them. Is there anything nearby? No, not really. Not in this direction. Okay. The NCR is top. You lead something, Chief? Nah. Ranger, Chief Hammond, put a gun in his mouth. Randall. What is it, partner? Uh, three, or, <laughs> not three dog. <laughs> uh, that, that's a Fallout 3 character. Uh, kicking dog. Here's his finger. I suppose he kicked his last then. Serves that savage right. Here's your reward. Come on back when you're ready for the next one. Let's get what it. What is it, partner? This time you're going after Squirrely Bill Blazes. Big mouth cowboy who heads a gang of rowdies called the Vaqueros. In addition to being a full time bandit, he claims to have the most magnificent mustache in the territory. Oh. In my experience, only civil servants and pedophiles wear mustaches with pride. He's definitely not the former, so that narrows it down. I Old see. Bill recently set himself up at the town saloon, and he's now in the midst of a gambling bender. He also brought a few ruffians with him. A bounty is a bounty, but this one ain't so simple. We already have a touchy relationship with the town, so I don't want to make things worse. You can't just slip in and chop his head off or snipe him. It needs to at least look like self-defense, otherwise the townsfolk get all pissy. I have no doubt you can find some way to offend the fella. Once he draws on you, it's fair game. If you can pull it off, I'll throw in a bonus. Word has it that he's particularly touchy about the mustache, so there's a start. Any questions? Um... Is he a decent fighter? He's better than most, but he's mainly just crazy. Unpredictable is probably a better description. That's how he got his name. It's hard to read. He's like a lot of these hotshot banditos. Everything is wrapped up in that revolver at his side. Disarm him or wound him, and he's helpless. Any other questions? Um... Okay. Wait, oh, we can disarm him? So is this like a non-lethal one? I mean, you said there wasn't going to be any of those. Uh, is there anything else that might provoke Bill? If it were me, I'd bash his testicles with the butt of my pistol. But that's probably a bit overt. Oh, I almost forgot. He is supposed to be sweet on that yellow-haired whore, Lori. He likes to keep a monopoly on her when he's in town. I imagine it would be disconcerting if you were to partake of the young lady, particularly in earshot of Mr. Blasius. Oh. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, doesn't Lori have orange hair? <laughs> Don't forget, there's a bonus if you make Bill draw first. Good luck. Thanks. Uh, this is a duel. Um, let's see. Do we have... No, no. I was going to see if we could, uh, if we had two of the 357 Magnums, we could uh, craft a duel revolvers. I want to do that at some point in this mod, just to uh, run dual, dual revolvers. Um, Frost Hill. Alright. And Ford, we should probably have him stay outside. I don't want him fucking this up. Where you at? All right, lesson number eight. And I'm supposed to just sit here like some kind of hobo. Fine. Well, sit then. <laughs> sitting like a hobo is better than sitting like a dog.
What are you doing around here, fancy pants? Oh, you come to admire my moustache, huh? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's right. Just take it all in. Mmm, -mm, good. That's what all the ladies say when I give them a taste of this love rug above my lips. Drives them crazy. You know, I reckon you want to touch it, don't you? Well, that's just too goddamn bad. Only Lori gets to be caressed by the love rug, stranger. Um, attempt to fondle Bill's mustache. <laughs> I got an idea. Bye. We gotta go get a mustache. <laughs> Uh. Alright, Cuddy, we've been over this before, but it's unresolved. Who is the baddest motherfucker in the whole wasteland? Oh? Uh, I gotta think about that one. Um. Uh, maybe Django Westwood. Uh. I also heard of John Goodman. He's pretty crazy. Um. Uh, it's pretty much like Atlantis. Not bad. But I still think it's Doc Friday. Great pistolero. He's also smooth with the ladies. He's a fucking hero. That's what he is. You always pick him because he's a fucking ghoul. He's like your little fucking hero. You want to get a fucking action figure of him so you can play with it? You're just jealous because the ghouls have legitimate heroes. What are the mutants got? Nothing. Well, I guess you're going feral already, turning into a fucking idiot. Because you never heard a bad motherfucker. He's the baddest fucking dude ever. Yeah? Oh, I heard of it. He only says one word, right? Uh, yeah, he's a retard. Why don't you make a fucking statue out of him? Fucking dumbass mutants. <laughs> I swear to God, you're going fucking feral. Bad motherfucker is not a retard. He is a fucking philosopher. Changed my life. You know what? Why don't you just go marry him? You can start your own little fucking mutant but fuck cult. That's what it will be. But fuck isn't. All right, I'm gonna have to start wearing a helmet. Cause you're, you're gone feral. You're gonna try to eat my brains. Full fucking zombie mode here. Clearly. That's taking it too far. You mean spirited son of a bitch. Fucking calling me the Z word. You don't even know what that means. You ever seen a feral? Oh, I've got a great example. Doc Friday. Feral fucking zombie. I said it. Zombie. Ooh. Whoa now. You just. Shit in my hat right there. Get the fuck out of here. You're fired. Get the fuck out of my barbershop right now. <laughs> no, no. This is a partnership. I got half interest. I I'm firing you, motherfucker. You get the fuck out of my half. Don't touch my shit. Fine. We'll paint a line down the middle. I'm gonna steal all your fucking customers because you're a shitty barber and you're fucking ugly. <laughs> oh, like they were coming in here because of your good looks. If we put you on the fucking sign or the billboard or whatever, they will burn this fucking place down. I see your lips moving, but I just hear dog shit coming out of them. We're through. Pack your shit. Stay on your half of the building. You bet your ass I will. Start with... Well, what about the vending machine? We a lot of fucking work. You wanna just get drunk? Oh, shit, that's a good point. I don't wanna lift shit. Let's just get drunk. Alright. Hello! Cuddy, I need a hookup. Oh yeah, absolutely. 20, 20 caps, that's it. Just tell me how short you want it. Get you set right up. I need a must- Oh, what? What? What's going on? Oh. <laughs> okay. Um. Gunslinger. Mutton stash. No. No. A ladies' man.
Mephistopheles. Ooh. call it a love rug let's, let's get a good look at this that is not a love rug that is a pussy duster. <laughs> uh, I used to work with a guy that called it that. I miss him. He was always bitching about something. Oh, I think I might have a better mustache. Is your hair yellow? It looks more orange. Okay, I can see the yellow. Okay. What is it, honey? Uh, romping the hay. Sorry, I'm close for business. Bill don't like to share me when he's in town. Do you see the mustache I have? Bill can't do the things to you that I can do. Damn, I do believe it's warm in here. Let's step into my room and cool off. You! You were back there, doing things to my lorry. I heard it all, you slimy fuck. And I ain't going to bury you. Then that bitch is gonna get it. Watch out! You. Uh. you like that? Hey. time folks hands. Oh, nope, didn't mean to do that. Whoa, We've only got 35 of those left. He had dual. Damn it. Let's put them on. Where are they at? Actually. Uh, 
Did you all kill Al? Where, where is Al? Vaquero, Vaquero. Uh. What is it, honey? Never mind. He didn't kill him, did he? How much? Let's see. Ooh, we got two forty fours, we can upgrade. animations on these are just perfect. Um, Alright, so dual 44s. Now, I know there's some other ones, and I don't think we've ever built them. Because um, I think they have like unique revolvers covered. So like, what's the cowboy one? Hard luck. Too lucky. Okay. Too lucky requires a Ranger Sequoia and two three fifty sevens. Hmm. Oh wait, let's build the forty fours. Same as the three to the sevens. All right, let's head back to Randall and see if we can sneak one more bounty in. The great cons just packed up and what is it, partner? Uh killed Bill Blasius in self-defense. Here's his finger. Sometimes nicknames are just random or nonsensical, but his was dead on. Squirrely indeed. You played this one smart, and I appreciate it. We're one step closer to Marco, and the townsfolk are starting to hate us less. It was excellent work. So here's the bonus, as promised. Get rested and report back when you're ready. Well, I'm what is it, partner? Ready. Okay, your target is Oliver Doolin, one of the most prolific caravan robbers in recent history. For over two decades, he and a number of cronies pillaged NCR commerce in and around the frontier. It was only recently that he teamed up with Marco. Nobody's quite sure why he got in bed with Marco, but he did. That gets him on our list. A source indicates that he's alone in a shack outside town. He might not be surrounded by a gang, but don't underestimate Doolin. He's rumored to be quick and steady. Dangerous combination. Any questions? Um, 
targeting one old bandit? He doesn't sound like much. Nobody runs with Marco unless they're a bad customer. Doolin wasn't just a robber. He killed at least one sheriff in cold blood. Besides, Brookshire is adamant about this one. NCR doesn't forgive or forget. Yeah, learned that. All right, you just watch yourself out there. Good luck. Well, you know what? Let's um. Ford, let's see you with some. Sure, door. I'll carry anything. I'm the strongest motherfucker in this whole canyon. I could probably give you the dual 44s because you already have a trail carbine, so you got ammo for it. You what you me? got? Uh, I guess we haven't. Yeah, sure thing. Um, where are you from? I came up on the family ranch, West New Reno, uh, up in the mountains, you know. Uh, it wasn't too much different from here, actually. I was in the middle of, like, seven kids. I had to toughen up quick. People stopped pushing me soon enough, since I was a regular ass-kicker. Hurting bighorners ain't no life for a killer like me. I left the ranch a few years back, set out guarding caravans and hunting down bounties. When I heard that the famous Stephen Randall was tracking down Marco, I knew right away where I needed to be. It is my destiny to help you kill Marco. Okay. Yeah, sure thing. Um, any reason you're acting so self-assured? It seems like you're overcompensating. I'm not overcompensating. I'm just fucking good at everything. I was born this way, so you're gonna have to deal with it. Your braggad... Docio suggests a raging superiority complex. You need to take it down a notch. What? <laughs> Look, you can stow all your fancy book learnings. I am from the school of hard knocks. I don't need no book smarts. Alright. <laughs> um, where to? I guess, for sure. I think next episode I might um, travel over to the sink real quick. I want to try crafting one of those uh, unique dual revolver setups. Speaking of which, I have to actually equip mine. Shack. Easy there, killer. I'm not looking to fight you. At least not yet. I know you're probably out for blood. But would you mind hearing me out first? Uh, say your piece. I wonder why you really came here. I've heard stories about Randall and all that business down in Vegas. But this is different. They say you've killed a lot of bad men. Got a real instinct for it. Maybe you really are as good as they say. Let me tell you something, though. It won't matter if you go up against Marco. I'm not trying to scare you, because it's not about skill. I know Marco. I know him well. I believe he came here to turn away from what he was. Start over. He changed his name. He even got a woman. When he found out about Sergio... I saw him change again, like somebody had flipped over a card. That old demon inside was awake again. You might be fast, you might be tough, but Marco will do anything to settle that score. He wanted you to come here.
Marker might be fast, but I'm faster. You think you're good? Believe me, you ain't half as fast as Marco. Nobody, not even Doc Friday, stands a chance in a straight fight. Killed the judge, took care of Red Bear. I doubt Marco can be much worse. If you're gonna speak in degrees of bad, there's Marco, and then there's everybody else. Those men you mentioned feared Marco for a reason. See, he doesn't live to outshoot folks or even kill people. He revels in domination. He believes he's special, more so than anyone. Going after you is probably as much about revenge for Sergio as it is to preserve the myth around him. He loves to be feared more than anything. All the others? I bet they never did that to you. Gave you real pause. You just went in after him like a hunter. And it worked. Marco will use that instinct against you. I don't know how or when, but he'll find a way. I just wish you wouldn't give him the opportunity. How'd you get mixed up with Marco? I grew up on the frontier. My parents were NCR settlers. Farming never suited me, though. As a young man, I just wanted to feel alive, not like dying a little every day. That's what farming was to me, a slow death. I ran away at 15, joined the gang. I learned the trade soon enough, took to robbing caravans, but it was never about the money. I enjoyed the chase, leading men into the fray, staying ahead of the law. Only the rangers ever got close to me, though. Last few years, it got harder, though. We'd been boxed in by NCR, Legion, and Hades, and they all wanted me dead. When Marco showed up, he offered to get me set up in Frost Hill in exchange for a share of my earnings and unwavering loyalty. See, Frost Hill is a haven for old bandits like me. It's where we come to escape and settle down, free from the government and savages out there. Ironically, now that I'm getting older, I find myself missing that old farm more and more. I do wonder what became of it sometimes. I had hoped to ease out of this racket, maybe start selling tobacco. Man will always pay good money for a smoke. I soon realized that Marco had other plans for me and for this town. I don't know exactly what, but things will never be the same up here. NCR always wanted my head for the money I stole. They didn't care much about that sheriff and the two deputies I shot. Just the money. So you gonna gun me down like the rest, saw off my finger? Vicious business. Damn bears love their records. Um... You may have bought into Marco's mystique, but he's just a man. He'll die like the rest. You say it like you mean it, but even if you do kill him, the price you'll have to pay, it's not worth it. Just leave it be. Live out your life. Stay the course, and you'll wish you never came here. Mark my words. So what happens next? What happens next? I'd like for you to walk away. Leave this behind while you're still in one piece. As for me, I'd like to do the same. But let's face it, I'm a dead man outside Frost Hill. I know you aren't going anywhere, so that sort of boils it down. Why don't you just follow your own advice and just leave this place? There's no future here. What, so I can start over and be an honest citizen? I might just be a half-assed bandit, but even I have some sense of justice. Killing you in this shack isn't justice either. Now get out of here before I change my mind. I never expected to leave here alive. For what it's worth, you have my thanks. Duolin has left for parts unknown. It's uncertain if your paths will ever cross again. Ford shakes his head in disapproval and mutters complaints about your decision to spare Duolin. When he 
you've seen as much death as I have, maybe you'll understand the value of Mercy. Mercy? He was an evildoer. Probably kicked puppies and stomped babies for fun. Just like the rest of them psychos. He deserved to die. I thought you were the real deal, and now you're just acting like a pussy. What happened to you? <laughs> One more word and I'll break your fucking neck. <coughs> oh, okay. Oh. All right, sorry. It was it was figurative. Oh, oh, man, you're right. I was being a disrespectful asshat. It will <coughs> it won't happen again. I swear. All right. It's good to hear. All right. Well, we will cut here and uh resume on the hunt in the next episode. Hope y'all enjoyed. Y'all have a great night.